Students, welcome to another Mr. Ness screencast. Today's aim is Rostow's model of development. And here are your objectives. Please pause the video, look these questions over, and get ready to copy some vocab terms and take some notes. In the last lesson, you looked at the question of how can a poor, less developed country become wealthy and developed? And you learned about one approach called the self-sufficiency model of development. That model said that countries should have a lot of government involvement in the economy. They should keep foreign products out and they should encourage people to buy domestic goods. In today's lesson, you're going to learn about a totally different approach to development. And this new approach is called Rostow's model of development. Here is Walter Rostow. He was an American economist who proposed this path to development. Now, this model has a lot of different names. Take a second to look at all of the different names that can be used to refer to this model. The AP uses the terms Rostow's model and modernization theory. But in the real world, you're probably more likely to hear the names international trade, free trade, laissez-faire capitalism, or neoliberalism. Personally, I prefer the term international trade model so you're going to hear me using that one too sometimes. All right, Rostow's model is both a set of practices that countries are encouraged to follow and a prediction that if countries follow those practices, they will pass through five distinct stages. So this is a five-stage model. In this video, you're going to learn about the practices that Rostow encouraged countries to follow and in class, you'll look at the five stages that the model predicts. All right, let's look at what Rostow told less developed countries to do in order for them to obtain a higher standard of living. First, get rid of tariffs. Tariff-free trade with other countries. That means countries should let any foreign company sell its goods in their country without charging them anything extra. You might notice that this is already a major contrast to the self-sufficiency model, which said that countries should have tariffs in order to protect domestic industries. Rostow's model tells countries to get rid of tariffs. Second, privatization of industries. That means that every business or service should be run by private investors, not by the government. And if the government already controls an industry, Rostow says that it should be sold off to private companies. According to Rostow's model, there should be no government-run industries. And that is another big contrast to the self-sufficiency model. Third, foreign investment. That means that developing countries should let multinational corporations, which are based in other countries, come in and buy land for plantations or open up factories or open up stores. This is yet another contrast with self-sufficiency because in the self-sufficiency model, countries were trying to keep foreigners out and encourage people to buy domestic products. But Rostow's model is telling LDCs to let foreign companies come and use their money to build businesses in that country. Lastly, Rostow says that every country should focus on its comparative advantage. Okay, let's look at that term. Comparative advantage is the ability of a country to produce a good at a lower cost than another country. That means that some countries can make things more efficiently and cheaper than other ones. Let me give you an example. Colombia can produce coffee more cheaply than Canada, 
because Colombia has a tropical climate that's good for growing coffee beans, while Canada's climate is too cold. Canada could possibly erect huge heated greenhouses to grow coffee in, but that would be extremely expensive. In Colombia, greenhouses aren't needed because it's hot outside. So in terms of coffee production, we could say that Colombia has a comparative advantage over Canada. And according to Rostow's model, that means that Colombia should focus its economy on coffee. The major industries should be coffee, and most people in Colombia should work in coffee production. Another example is that the country of Bangladesh can produce clothing more cheaply than the United States, because Bangladesh has lots of people who are willing to work for cheaper wages than Americans are. Since a company wouldn't have to pay its workers as much in Bangladesh, it can manufacture clothes more cheaply there than it could in America. So we would say that in terms of clothing manufacturing, Bangladesh has a comparative advantage over the U.S. Notice again that this aspect of Rostow's model also differs from the self-sufficiency model. The self-sufficiency model said that a government should spread investment across all sectors of the economy. But Rostow says, just focus on the one thing that you have a comparative advantage in. So according to Rostow, Bangladesh should invest heavily in clothing manufacturing, but invest less in things like agriculture or healthcare. The last term today is Asian dragons, also called Asian tigers. So we're going to talk a lot in class about critiques of Rostow's model, but there are four countries that used his model very successfully. And starting in the 1960s, these four countries went from being poor LDCs to being rich MDCs. And people that like Rostow's model always cite the Asian dragons as evidence of why his model is correct. Here are the four Asian dragons, Hong Kong, Singapore, South Korea, and Taiwan. As you write these down, notice what countries are not on this list. First, China is not on the list, even though Hong Kong is now part of China. Also, notice that Japan is not on the list. Remember, Japan used the self-sufficiency model and did not follow Rostow's model. Okay, so starting in the 1960s, the four Asian tigers all focused on their comparative advantage. And like my example of Bangladesh, the thing that those countries had that a lot of other countries didn't was poor people who were willing to work for very low wages. And so Hong Kong and Singapore and South Korea and Taiwan, they said, Foreign corporations from wealthy countries, move your factories to our country. We will make your products very cheaply because you won't have to pay our workers very much. And this plan worked. The countries followed Rostow's model and they got very rich. Back in the 1960s, these countries were LDCs, but today they're all MDCs. So in terms of development, Rostow's model was a very big success for them. All right, now it's time to review the objectives. If you don't know the answer to any of them, rewind the video and look again. And I will see you in class. Bye, students.